So I'm just going to do a quick video about um, Zimmer and Peacock's um, glucose sensors. So Zimmer and Peacock, we do something that's called the Anapot, and that's a small um, handheld USB potential stat, and it comes with scientific software. And more importantly, we also have glucose strips. So if you go onto our website, you'll find that we have standard sensors for glucose and lactate and potassium. Things like hydro peroxide are up there, nitric oxide are on there. So we have standard sensors and we have a small electronics box for running those sensors. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'll take, well the first thing I'm going to do is demonstrate how easy it is to use a glucose sensor to do something like um, measuring the glucose in um, regular Coke versus Coke Zero, which has no sugar in it. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is just show you one of these glucose sensors. So this is one of our glucose sensors. It looks like a glucose strip that you would buy maybe in the pharmacy if you were um, a diabetic. This strip is actually different because it's what we call a self-monitoring blood glucose strip or an SMBG and you can use it in the food industry, you can use it in water testing, you can use it in process control, you could use it in bioreactors. It can be used for one-off readings, but it's also got what's called continuous mode. What that, what that means is the enzymes are bound to this electrode, so that if you put a solution on it or you flow a solution, the enzyme will not be washed away, or the active materials will not be washed away, they'll remain on the electrode. So it has two, um, let's say, functions. It can be used just one-off to measure something, or you can put it into a solution or a flow stream of some description, it'll continuously monitor. So that's the heart of it. So what I'll do is I'll put it into the um, Anapot. And what I'll next do then is just take some Diet uh, Coke. I'll take a clean pipette. So nothing special to, to the, to the um, I call it Diet Coke, but some places Coke Zero. I'm not going to do anything special to it. Just put it on the sensor, like that. I'll start the software. So um, I'm doing a very simple little um, assay. It's applying a voltage of 650 millivolts. Um, the save rate is about one second and it'll run for something like 30,000 seconds. So I will just discard my old data. And what it's doing now is it's just counting down the five seconds, three, four, and five, and the experiment has started. So it's terribly unexciting because what's happening here now is we've got the um, Diet Coke or the Coke Zero, which has no glucose in it. And um, that means that the enzyme in there, which is specific to the, um, let's say the sugar, has effectively nothing to do. So I'm gonna get what, what I would call a baseline signal. So I'll let it, um, I'll let it stabilize in a, in, a, in a bit. So I'm watching the signal coming down and then it sort of, it, it falls and then it, it plateaus. So we're running this in what I would call a um, discrete mode. We're, we're putting the samples onto the sensor. So what I'll do next then is take some regular Coke. You don't have to do anything special to this. And so what I'll do now is I will see that we've we've been running this test for 74 um, seconds. So let's do a sort of countdown to about 100 seconds. So I'm just watching the timer now. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on just a bit of regular Coke. So I'll just show you what I'm doing there. So nothing special, no, no special equipment really required. I'm just going to put a bit of coke on, and then if you back out slightly, you'll watch the video at the same time. So I'll just put some coke on. Bang. And dramatically, the signal has jumped up, and it's going up, it's going up all the time. 
And what that what that is, is there was no glucose, there was no sugar in or on the sensor. So the sensor was just reading Diet Coke. We've put on real Coke, if we can call it that, or at least the original with um, the sugar in it. And the signal has jumped up immediately because the enzyme is specific to the sugar. And we're getting now the production of a molecule called hydroperoxide. And that's what we're then oxidizing. So you almost, uh, I mean, if I was to summarize this, I'd say, right. So you can walk into this situation. You, you know, you, you've got the Anapot um, from Zimmer and Peacock. We've put a standard sensor that we just sell online, a standard glucose sensor in this example. We've put it onto the Anapot and we've put standard, oh sorry, we put Diet Coke on there. No glucose in that. And then you saw, we just take it straight from the Coke can, we put the sugar on there, and we get a lovely big signal. So you can just see the signal now, and I'll just talk you through it. First of all, we got what I would call a baseline, so that was zero, Coke zero, and then we put Coke in there itself, and now we've got a, a new signal, which is really quite a large signal. So it actually says an awful lot about how much sugar there really is in, um, in Coke. So clearly in this application, we're now we've just shown it for the food industry, um, you know, but it can be used in a medical space, it could be used in a bioreactor space, um, it could be used in cell culture examples. So if you have any questions, Zimmer and Peacock's business model is we partner with people um, either through giving them standard products or through services and we want to get everyone basically to the market in their application of interest. So please contact us. Thanks very much.